friends this is ca divya and in today's session i want to introduce you with some basic points and concepts of audit now the term audit has been derived from the latin word audire which means to hear with the increase in size of the companies the emphasis or focus of audit has shifted from expression of opinion on the basis of true and correct to true and fair now the chapter 10 of companies act 2013 that is from section 139 to 148 deals with the provisions of audit and auditors now what is audit we should know the basic definition of audit auditing is the independent examination of financial information of any entity whether profit oriented or not irrespective of its size or legal form when such an examination is conducted in order to express an opinion thereon now its explanation auditing is the independent examination independent means that is free from any kind of bias and prejudices even section 141 subsection 3 of companies act 2013 states the disqualification of auditor that is he should not be disqualified from being appointed as auditor of the company it uh, follows he should not be the employee of the company his relative should not be the employee of the company that is before becoming an auditor he should be free from any kind of prejudices which may hamper his independence now the second is examination of financial information now what we audit we generally audit the financials of the company that is the balance sheet pl cash flows etc of the company it may be profit oriented or may not be irrespective of its size and legal form and such an examination is mainly conducted with a view to express an opinion thereon you should remember we conduct audit in order to express our view our opinion on the financial statements of the company now the features of the audit the first feature is independent person i have already stated the meaning of independence that is the free from any kind of bias and prejudices now the second is systematic process systematic process it means that is there should be proper planning scheduling execution implementation it means audit is not a haphazard or random process that we can go and just do it no it is a systematic process first of all we have to plan our audit we should know about the organization then we will plan accordingly we will schedule our audit we will inspect the documents we will frame our opinion so it's a systematic process then comes established criteria it follows there are certain established criteria like we have to follow as caro indas ifrs etc whichever is applicable to the company i know in this uh, slide i have mentioned certain words like caro indas ifrs so i will discuss it later in detail then it comes verification of records obviously when we go for a audit we will verify the records like like vouchers tally entries invoices etc and those records are verified in order to collect the evidences to frame our opinion thereupon we should be able to collect those evidences which help us to frame an opinion thereupon now the objectives of auditing what are the basic objectives of auditing there are two types of objectives one is primary objective and second is secondary objective now the primary objective with no doubt and confusion it is to express an opinion on the truth and fairness of the financial statements and the secondary objective follows detection and prevention of frauds and errors now what are the differences between frauds and errors fraud is done intentionally that is we want to cheat our organization in that situation it is called as fraud but error is generally as the name suggests it is done erroneously or mistakenly which is not intentional that is it is unintentional now other objectives include to obtain reasonable assurance obviously when we audit we go through our processes in order to 
obtain reasonable assurance that is our financial statements are free from any kind of material misstatements material material the definition means or the materiality means anything any information which may hamper our decision making those information is material to report on the financial statements yeah we have to report on the financial statements and we have to comply with the requirements of ss not only requirements of ss we have to comply with the legal and regulatory requirements whichever is applicable to the company suppose if sebi guidelines are applicable it means in case of listed companies if sebi guidelines are applicable to the company so we have to follow that also now the scope of auditing audit scope what is the definition of audit scope audit scope is defined as the time and documents which are involved in an audit that is it defines how deeply an audit is to be performed it means scope that is area gamut the entire gamut ek chhatri hai jiske andar hame apna audit ko complete karna hai to yahi audit scope hai now there are certain basic points to be considered in case of scope that is in case of framing of opinion the auditor should be satisfied that the accounting informations are reliable and sufficient for the basis of preparation of financial statements now what is reliable reliable that is on which we can rely or the information which which we can trust and sufficient so I, like uh, if i will take cash balances if i have to audit the cash balances then the various informations which are provided to me should be sufficient we should check the cash book we should check the other expenses which are paid in cash etc that is the information should be sufficient then all aspects of the enterprise to be covered in audit obviously the various aspects there are there are various aspects in an organization which we have to consider while doing an audit like if the company is in litigation there may be contingent liabilities which may rise in the future so we have to consider that now in framing the opinion the auditor auditor should also decide whether the relevant information is properly disclosed in the company in the financial statements that is the informations that is the very various relevant information relevant it means important jo zaruri mahatvapurn informations hai wo properly financial statements mein dikhaye gaye hai ki nahi now the auditor is not going to or he is not expected to perform beyond the scope of the competence it means if i am a plain chartered accountant i have to do the audit if somebody is expecting me to do forensic audit but i am not compatible not compatible i can can't say but i am not competent enough to do that forensic audit i have to get the degree i have to get the knowledge about forensic audit so i cannot go beyond the scope of my competence and the lastly it comes in case there is any constraint limitation restriction on the scope of audit which impairs my ability to express an opinion that should be clearly stated in my report it means if any if any constraint or limitation whether imposed by the client or by the environment by any any means if any limitation is imposed to me or to my scope of audit it should be clearly mentioned in my report so with this i want to wrap up my this session of basic concepts of audit thank you see you next